Hi, I'm Michael Cloth. Today I'm going to talk to you about doing some basic exposure corrections using Lightroom. If you are not really very familiar with Lightroom, the first thing you need to do is select an image and go to the develop module. Sometimes this is going to be hidden and if that's the case, if you hold your cursor up, it'll pop back open. But if you want it to always be available, just click this little triangle right here. Today I'm going to work on this particular photo you can see it's a little bit underexposed but before I do that I wanted to show you something using the grayscale this is just a regular gradient goes from pure black to pure white and basically uh, you can see that I've got some adjustments here already I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, reset that if you hold down the alt or the option key this tone here turns into a reset tone you can see everything here is uh, zeroed out the main exposure tools you're going to want to use for a, a global adjustment which is going to change everything is going to be right here in the basic panel. Uh, well, we can talk about white balance at some other point if you have questions about that. The first slider is of course going to affect everything and I'd like you to look specifically here at the histogram and uh, this as well as it changes. Now I've turned on the clipping and so you can see these little white triangles here that's indicating that there is clipping the red down here, the blue, that's showing that there's clipping on uh, the highlights, red and blue for shadows. The J and the keyboard will turn that back off. So again, look at the histogram, move it up, move it down, and you can see how it affects the whole image. Contrast is going to try to stretch out the histogram to move things to the left and the right both or if you go to the left it's going to try to minimize the contrast by pushing everything into the middle. The highlights here, now um, there's a big question here is between highlights and whites. So highlights, look at the histogram and you can see how it's affecting everything and then uh, here I'll, I'll push it again so you can see how it affects the gradient. Now compare that to the whites tool which is primarily going to do uh, just the whites without moving too much of the rest of the histogram. So here again I'll move it over and you can see they're similar for sure but, they're, but the, the way that they apply the correction is much more limited. Uh, similarly with the shadows, shadows are going to move the whole histogram and primarily it's going to go in this three quarters tones area whereas with the blacks it's primarily just going to move the black point and you can see how the histogram doesn't change nearly so much so understanding that uh, we're going to go look at an image now this is a photograph here this dog was photographed on a, a bright sunny day um, the dog was in the shade and I used a flash uh, first thing I want to do is, is probably tweak the white balance just a touch and warm this this up. For now I'm just going to use this little slider to do it by eye. Uh, next thing what we do is we look at the histogram and we see there's a pretty big gap here uh, between where the histogram ends and the right side of where it could go. That's usually a pretty good indicator that you can move the exposure slider over to the right a bit. And again um, you want to look at the histogram but also just do this by eye. Now, of course, if the, the dog hadn't been a dark dog, I probably wouldn't have needed to go quite as far as I did. But because um, she has a, a fairly dark face, and especially around the eyes, I, I could do a, a pretty solid uh, change without causing any problems. You can see here that the cyan is showing there's a little bit of clipping. Um, what it turns out is it's actually deep in the mouth, and so that's not going to be an area of concern for me. So it's okay to have a little bit of clipping. Just understand uh, where that clipping is and the more clipping you have, the more likely it is to be a problem. From here, I probably bring the highlights down a little bit. So if we go back and look at the history, you can see I had some, some nice blue colors here. I wanna get some of that back and, and so the, the highlights will bring some of those back without affecting the, the shadow here in the, the dog's face. Um, I'd like to bring up the eyes just a little bit more so the next I would do would, would probably move the shadows a little bit. And um, for this particular image I don't think I need to do white and blacks but of course there's really not that much harm in trying so you can you can see how it looks. Um, to me actually moving the, the white point up a little bit I think gives the image a little bit more pop. Uh, similarly moving the black to the left gives it a little bit more contrast but again we start to, to lose the dog's eyes perhaps a little bit in, in the, uh, the fur so I probably want to bring that up a little bit. Now it's worth pointing out that 
but changing the whites in the blacks here is essentially the same as using the contrast slider. So you can see here I increased the whites. I didn't actually mean to move that one up. Uh, here I, I probably moved the blacks down to uh, somewhere in the t minus 25. Um, making a, a change like this is not too dissimilar to what you would get if you moved your contrast slider up by about 25. Um, so there's two different ways to do it here. Um, either way is fine. Now I'm getting close to wrapping it up here. One last thing I wanted to show you is if you wanted to bring the background down just a little bit more, uh, because this was shot by a pond, the next place you might want to go to is the HSL palette. And here um, I'm just going to click on the little circle and you can see there's triangles. Now if I click and drag up, that's going to increase the saturation a little bit just in the areas where um, I'm clicking. So you can see the blues and the aquas changed. Uh, similarly, if I click and drag down on the luminance, you can bring those tones back a little bit. Here's a quick before and after for you so you can see the original image and how the final image looked after those edits. Thank you very much for spending your time with me. Again, my name is Michael Cloth on behalf of HeartSpeak. Thank you very much for all the work that you do on behalf of all of these rescue and adoptable animals. If you have any questions about what I've talked about today or if you have suggestions for future topics, I've included my email, info at michaelcloth.com. Please feel free to send me uh, any of those comments. Thank you very much. Goodbye.